first released the arcade in 1986, Outrun is a stone cold classic of the era. A game that firmly cemented Sega as a master of engineering wizardry and game design. Helmed by the famed programmer Yu Suzuki, Outrun featured a number of advances in the racing genre, with its sprite scaling graphics, non linear gameplay, and, in its best form, a hydraulically controlled motion simulator cabinet, enabling young and old alike to take the wheel of a Ferrari Testarossa and do some wheelies. Wait, not wheelies. Oh, you can do whatever you want, you're in a Ferrari. Accompanied by absolutely incredible music from legendary Sega composer Hiroshi Kawaguchi, whether you're cruising along to Magical Sound Shower or thrashing out the absolute banger Splash Wave, Arcade Outrun is a joy to experience. Powered by an evolution of the Superscalar hardware first seen in 1985's Hang On, Yu Suzuki ramped everything up to 11, refining the system specification and doubling the clock speed of the hardware to fully realise his vision of a fast 3D racer, allegedly inspired by 1981's hit movie The Cannonball Run. Outrun proved to be such a popular game that throughout the late 80s and early 90s, you could walk into an arcade anywhere and find an Outrun cab sucking in coins. In fact, one of my earliest gaming memories is sitting down playing Outrun, an East Coast amusement arcade, in around 1988, when I was six. Yeah, I'm that old. <laughs> and, as is tradition, home ports of popular arcade games were sure to follow, and Outrun is no exception. Sega would of course bring Outrun to its Master System console in 1987 and look to UK developers Probe Software to bring it to home computers of the time throughout 1987 to 1989. Replicating Sega's System 16 hardware at home would prove challenging and cuts were required for each version, some more so than others. And we'll take a look as I take you through every home port of Sega's phenomenal Outrun. Most of the gameplay footage on this rundown was captured from the Mr. FPGA system I have here, with a few notable exceptions. The Mr.'s Sega Saturn and Outrun arcade cores are in active development, and I'll continue to follow their progress in upcoming videos. Outrun would see the first home ports arrive throughout 1987, firstly with the Master System, and towards the end of the year on Amstrad CPC ZX Spectrum and C64. The rest would follow in the subsequent years, culminating in 1996's port to the Sega Saturn. So let's take a look, starting with the Master System. Yes, the Master System, a minor triumph. This version delivers something that retains much of the feel of the arcade. It's the very earliest home port, and for a long time, arguably one of, if not the best. Having played this back to back with the Game Gears Outrun, the main thing lacking here is the colour palette. It's just a little bit washed out. Whereas Sega's handheld looks much closer to the original. And if I'm really nitpicking, the tyre screeching could do with toning down a bit. But overall, yes, Outrun on Master System is a tour de force of how arcade ports should and could be done in the right hands. A superb effort from Sega, and a fine showing to the start of this list. I can't believe I'm saying this, but the ZX Spectrum version of Outrun is actually rather good. Unlike some of its peers, the Specky port has branching paths, suitably scaled traffic, and features that very closely mirror the arcade original. Now, on original hardware, it can be something of a slideshow. That's not to say it doesn't capture the feel of the original, but at four or five frames a second, no one would say it's by any means smooth. But running here on Mister, we can choose the more advanced plus three hardware revision and boost the clock speed to seven megahertz. We now get in-game music and overall better sound reproduction, transforming the experience into something far more credible. Somewhat controversially, the Spectrum version was first shown off in popular UK magazine, Your Sinclair with far better graphics, prompting a raft of complaints. The Amstrad CPC, 
And like the Spectrum version, this was developed by Probe Software and published by US Gold. But unlike the Spectrum version, it isn't particularly fun. Improvements include full color graphics. Yeah, that's it. But at the expense of what little speed there was. Nothing in the way of sound effects, just beeps. Beeps. I'm certain some people would have had fun with this back in the day. But nowadays it serves only to remind us that licensed ports often deserve the poor reputation that they have. So, Outrun on C64. Like the other 8-bit micros, your expectations need to be severely tempered. Temper them hard. It's far from the greatest incarnation of Outrun, and despite its Atari 2600 inspired graphics, I have to give props to the developer for coding something truly unique for Commodore's popular little machine. It powers along at a fair clip, and is rather smooth compared to many of its contemporaries. The branching routes are handled differently here by selecting them from the outset. The game will put you on one of five paths to the finish. so quite linear really. At least they tried. Yeah, actually many of these ports can be summed up by that one phrase. At least they tried. To say the Commodore Amiga's port of Outrun was a disappointment would be quite the understatement. The hardware is clearly capable of so much more than this lacklustre port offers. It's laughable. Ha ha ha. The most egregious complaints stem from the frame rate which chugs along at a leisurely 6 frames per second or so. The road and vehicles seem to be squashed down, making it almost impossible to see what's coming up, and the stages proceed in a linear fashion without branching pathways. Come on man, even the Spectrum can manage branching paths. Probably one of the most baffling omissions are the music tracks, of which there's simply a small snippet of Magical Sound Shower on repeat. It's not even like they couldn't have fit more tunes on the disc, as there's a large amount of space dedicated to an utterly bizarre digitised intro. Have a listen to this. Sega Computer Software presents Outrun. Not a good Outrun. Bad Outrun. The Atari ST. This version shares many similarities with its Amiga counterpart. It's not hard to see that it's pretty much exactly the same game. The main difference here is the speed. Indeed, the ST's higher clock 6800 helps the game zip along. Both versions share the control scheme of holding up to accelerate and use the joystick button to change gear high and low, but it's just as lacking in gameplay and features as the Amiga. It's one of those rare titles that was written first for the ST and then ported to the Amiga. Maybe that finally settles the age old argument of which is better, Atari ST or Amiga? Well, in this instance, the Atari definitely has the best, worst version of Outrun. Well done. Ah, the MSX. The West's equivalent of the ZX Spectrum or C64. A reasonably well spec machine that does an admirable job. Admirable? I'm at it again. Admirable job with Outrun here. Coded by Pony Cannon Incorporated, an absolutely superb name for a game studio, in my opinion. They took a different route to most of the others I've shown so far by crafting a game that worked within the limits of the system and using the source material as its inspiration. As such, the game plays pretty well, with colourful, solid graphics, good speed and branching pathways. But the music isn't amazing. Although it does retain the track select at the start and features all three original tunes from the maestro Hiroshi Kawaguchi. Yeah, it's not bad at all, actually. Good effort. Once upon a time, the PC wasn't the gaming powerhouse that it is now, but that didn't stop Outrun being ported to it in 1989. I have mixed feelings about this version. On one hand, it ticks every Outrun box. A Ferrari, check. Selectable music tracks, check. Fast gameplay, check. And branching pathways, check, 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 check. Unfortunately for this release, it falls down in a few key areas. First and most noticeable, the music. It's appalling. Built at a time when sound cards were uncommon, it utilises the PC speaker to generate an approximation of Outrun's fantastic score. 
To be fair, it is in tune and somewhat accurate, but it still makes my ears bleed. Secondly, it's incredibly short and easy. I finished the game without even trying in about four minutes. But mostly, it just isn't very fun. The road feels cramped and the traffic is repetitive to a fault. The car just sort of slides around like it's on ice and collision detection is random at best. Nah, it's definitely not a version you want to play. Next. The PC Engine, or TurboGrafx-16, has shown itself time and time again to be a supremely capable machine. Famous for ports of arcade hits of the 80s and 90s, this incarnation of Outrun is simply superb. Sound is on point, with the tunes rendered brilliantly. Gameplay and graphics are exactly as you would expect, with nice little details such as the driver and passenger's hair flapping in the wind retained. Fast, fluid gameplay, and many levels of detail on the traffic sprites as they scale towards and away from the player. The colours are a bit muted, but overall it's a stunning showpiece of what this late 80s game console was capable of. Well, in 1991 Sega brought Outrun to its Game Gear handheld, and it's a stunning port. Unlike some Game Gear titles, this one stands apart from its Master System brethren with more colourful graphics and a clearly different game engine at work. Ultimately, as a cut down version of the arcade original, it does so much right. The difficulty is on point, a relaxing drive that punishes you harshly if you're a bit rubbish. And with all the Outrun features we've come to expect intact. The music sounds great and the aforementioned colour palette is perfect. Even if the Game Gear screen itself would have absolutely destroyed it. Branching routes and a time limit that's just right. It's a game that rewards fast, accurate driving, offering plenty of replayability for the 90s gamer on the go. Sure, the overall fidelity takes a huge hit, and of course there's no actual sprite scaling on display here, but somehow, in spite of all the cutbacks, it really feels like Outrun. Good job, Sega. Well, after proving Outrun on home consoles was a viable prospect with the Master System version, in 1991, Sega brought the now five-year-old arcade hit to the Mega Drive. Surely this would be THE version to own? Well, it's complicated. If you happen to see Outrun for the Mega Drive previewed in games magazines for the era, no doubt it looked impressive. Colourful, high-resolution graphics that looked very similar to the beloved arcade game. The reality of the situation isn't quite as rosy, however. The addition of an extra music track to the game's soundtrack did nothing to sweeten the deal, as it is, and I'm being generous here, forgettable. Maybe I'm being a little harsh, but Step On Beat really doesn't hold a candle next to Hiroshi Kawaguchi's banging originals. The gameplay itself is okay. It's pretty fast and feels and plays for the most part like Outrun, although a little sluggish on the controls and plagued by sprite flicker. My main gripe though is that the overall presentation just feels rushed, or like Sega didn't really care to give it the love it deserved. Perhaps in 1991, people had just grown a little weary of Outrun by this point, since it had already come to so many home computers and consoles in the preceding years. Sega was still growing the Mega Drive and Genesis library at lightning speed during this time, so it's likely that the team developing Outrun simply didn't receive the resources required to do it justice. Either way, it's a disappointing port that really should have been a touch better. Well, after the rumoured 32X version failed to materialise, Sega granted all our Outrun wishes that's harder to say than you think Outrun wishes in 1996. Widely regarded as a faithful port of the arcade original, the Sega Saturn at least managed to bring the golden child home in all its glory, a full 10 years after it first saw release to the arcade. If nothing else, it demonstrates just how groundbreaking the Sega 16 super scalar board designs were that it took so long. There really isn't much to say against what was accomplished here on the Saturn. Built from the ground up to run perfectly on Sega's 32-bit machine, 
for a long, long time, this was the best, and some might argue is still the best way to play OutRun at home. Now, admittedly, with modern hardware, running OutRun at home isn't the challenge it once was. The following years saw OutRun wrangled onto the Dreamcast as a playable game inside Shenmue, Japanese PS2 players had a version as part of the Sega Ages series, and it was included as a playable extra in OutRun 2006 for the Xbox in 2006. More recently, we've enjoyed ports to 3DS and Nintendo Switch, both delivering great performance and an arcade accurate presentation. And of course, there's emulation. Yeah, emulating the Saturn, Switch or arcade ROMs at home has never been easier. Even granting us the ability to use wheel and pedal controllers for the ultimate outrun experience, should you wish. And for FPGA enthusiasts, we've not only got the Saturn Core from SRG320 that's shaping up well, but the legendary Hotego is nearing completion of the complete Sega 16 board implemented in FPGA for Mr. and Analog Pocket. When complete, it will no doubt be the purest arcade version of OutRun you can play at home, leaning into all the strengths that FPGA offers with cycle accurate simulation of the hardware. In conclusion then, OutRun is a game that a casual observer may see as simplistic, and in many ways it is. Hailing from an era of arcade games that were designed to be as easy and accessible as possible, but underneath that facade is a masterpiece of engineering and technical wizardry that was a challenge to replicate in any credible sense on general purpose hardware like home computers and even game consoles of the 80s and early 90s. Decades later, thanks to the work of Hotego and other talented developers, we might just have a hardware accurate version of the original arcade board to enjoy at home and for decades to come. I'll leave links to core developers SRG320 and Hotego's Patreons in the description so you can support them there if you're able to. I hope you enjoyed that look back at our run through the ages. See what I did there? If you did, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Please. Alright, I'm done. <laughs>